day seven on the farm and day i don't know maybe nine maybe ten or even eleven of life for the birds and guys i'm excited okay i just caught one i just caught one guys isn't it exciting to see the feathers coming out yeah like they really have wing feathers at the moment just look at them you know there is wing feathers and the birds are growing up well they're all very energetic i don't know if you guys can see them running around me like i've said previously when i'm here in the middle talking for some reason they never come around me i think the, only the very brave ones come close to me the rest will all just keep running to the corners and for some reasons the birds just prefer to be on the corners like the boundaries even when there is no one I don't know why they don't really love being in the middle i'm certain the heat is enough guys 100 percent sure the heat is very okay and if i just moved away to the side you'll notice there are birds behind me you know yeah there's birds this past all behind me but the majority of them are on the boundaries you know and it's not like they are pressing each other but you just find them along the boundaries i don't know why uh, guys finally it's day seven and it looks like the bad days are behind me you know the days of death they are behind me let me let the bad lose hey you can go when you want to yeah so it looks like the bad days are behind me and i'm really 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 excited about what's happening you know what's going to happen in the future the place looks way cleaner with the papers off and all that kind of stuff but yeah the papers were necessary at the beginning you can see the wood shavings and already the birds are scratching the wood shavings you know the birds naturally just love to scratch the chickens that's what they are made for so it's not rare to see them scratching and they scratch and the scratches are not very nice because what happens is that inside these feeders then the wood shavings enter in here yeah so i occasionally have to come and get the wood shavings out of the feeders you know it's not very hard, not hard work, you know, you just need to shake a bit, the pellets will go down, the wood shavings come on top, and then you pull them off, yeah. The other thing is that the birds have already started to roast, you know, chickens are naturally roasting birds. That's why I made the roasting patches in this house before I even brought it in, brought them in. Because I know the roasting patches are very important. Number one, they prevent congestion of the birds. Since the birds will prefer to roast up, you know, they won't die. They'll just roast up and they won't pile themselves on the floor, you know, together and suffocate. Number two, it brings out the natural, you know, thing for the birds. So for now, what's happening is that the birds are roosting on top of the feeders. On day one, they wouldn't even climb on top of the feeders. It's interesting. They were too small to even jump here. But right now, they are climbing and roosting on top of these feeders, this upper line. And the problem with that, of course, is this. Poop. And it's not just poop here, but poop into the feeds themselves. So I can't wait for them to, you know, get way bigger so that I can use the adult feeders. Uh, with the adult feeders, you completely solve the problem of them having to poop in their own feed, you know. And then the thing I've talked about before is, you know, blunting the corners, yeah. I've been trying to blunt the corners because the corners are the places where the birds are most likely to die you know if they are scared of anything you know when they have just come on day one anything scares them when you just bring them here because they're not used to that i remember when they had just come when the cock would crow you know <coughs> man grandma's cock outside when it would crow at 4 a.m you'd see them scared like you know it would be super quiet in here but all of a sudden when it would crow they would all start running you know because it's something that scares them those days with the previous lot of birds it was the mowing of the cow because we had a cow nearby when the cow would mow they would all just get scared and run or if i just knock anything like you know here you notice them getting quiet and then running because that scares them so if they run they run into the corners and in the corners it just needs a few seconds of suffocation and the bird will die so i try to blunt the corners using cardboard and that's been very very effective the other thing that you need to do guys is replacing the water yeah you need to make sure that you replace the water at least twice a day yeah so you need to wash the drinkers you know in the morning and in the evening so i put my water at around 7 a.m i mean at around 6 p.m you know two times put water two times i even say three times the book 
the guidelines were which they had given me they spoke about washing the drinkers once at least once every day that's the the, the guys who supply the baby chicks you know the tetra sl suppliers they said you need to wash the drinkers at least once every day i've been doing it twice every day and that's very okay for me then yeah like i said the birds are starting to fly you can see yeah they are starting to fly if i put it here it's just going to fly off so they are starting to fly and the problem with that is that they could fly into the charcoal stoves so what we are starting to do guys is that we are starting to cover the charcoal stoves with iron sheets you know some kind of iron sheet to prevent the birds from flying into the charcoal stoves i had a problem with that in the past because the birds would fly into the charcoal stoves uh, in my previous lot of birds i really didn't lose any birds due to disease due to stress uh, or anything like that the birds that i lost in the first week were all due to birds that would fly into the pots or into the charcoal stoves uh, it was naivety guys so um i know it's about that time so i've started to cover the stoves to make sure that no birds fly into that because i don't want to lose any birds this time i've already lost enough and guys sometimes it gets really really scary like <laughs> scary these birds sleep like they're dead honestly when you look at it sleeping you might think the thing has died like they sleep in a really terrifying way the thing just like collapses and it's naked like and you're like what's happening <laughs> like what on earth is happening so um but i've learned that you know they're usually not dead so you will just you know tap a little bit or just touch it a bit and it's off and it's running so that's another thing that could be very scary I'm glad you guys have been following me on this journey, you know. Um, I want you guys to understand that I'm no angel and I'm no king. I'm no superpower. And anyone, just like I've lost birds, any of you could lose birds, yeah? But the most important thing is reacting, guys. You need to react. When the birds get sick, when the birds start dying because of, you know, stress, react, yeah? When the birds die because of disease, react. In my previous lot of birds, I had, you know, a disease that attacked some of my birds. And some of them had started dying. I think I lost like 20 birds to that disease. They had told me, hey, this disease has a mortality of, you know, upwards of 50%. I was like, guys, there's no way I'm going to lose, you know, 50% of my birds. So I reacted like super, super quick. And that's the thing with these birds, guys. You need to react like super quick, yeah? So what's happening for me is that my brother has been sleeping around yeah he sleeps inside the chicken house while i've been away at the beginning i was sleeping in here but he has been sleeping around and he has been helping me to make sure that the fire is available all throughout the night the night time is like the most important time when it comes to looking after these birds super super important because that's when it gets cold super cold especially between 1 a.m and 6 a.m you know 7 a.m it's super cold at that time and that time the fire needs to be you know replaced all the time so my brother has been super super helpful he has helped me you know keep replacing the fire and all that kind of stuff um and then you know you need to occasionally just wake up even though it's not about the fire just tap the birds because the birds just love to sleep on top of each other i don't know why like i've said you'll just find them in the corners yeah and even when the heat is enough i think they just they just love to sleep together so you occasionally just need to come you know tap and separate them so that they don't suffocate each other they could just suffocate each other yeah. so guys the other thing that's happening is that it's both fortunate and unfortunate you know fortunately and unfortunately my brother is going to be leaving the farm uh he's he got work somewhere another kind of work and he's moving on and it's fortunate because you know you let people chase their dreams it's my brother and you know you want him to do what he wants to do and i'm so happy for him it's unfortunate that he's leaving um as you guys might know in the past i had a problem with workers serious serious problem but if i leave my fingers here the birds just keep pecking on my fingers i don't know why let's try it out okay this one is this one this one might, must just be wondering why it's up so it's not trying to peck my fingers if i put my fingers down the birds just start pecking at them yeah but um he's leaving and i got another person and fortunately this person is a great person so in the past as you guys might know i've been having problems with workers and they have all been guys and i got advice from very many people telling me you know you want to stop that theft problem and guys who are too sharp for you get a lady 
a good lady. And guys, I've got a lady. She's going to be helping me work on the farm. And I know for ladies, it's a bit more complex because most of this work is, you know, tiresome, labor intensive, mixing the feeds and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be getting a guy to mix the feeds once a week. And then the rest of the work will be done by a lady. The ladies are usually more faithful. No offense to the guys, yeah? Don't be hurt. But they, they get, the ladies are more faithful. They are less likely to steal from, from you. They are more likely to do what you tell them to do. So I've got one to do the work. Currently, you're going through an orientation phase, you know, showing her what to do, what not to do. But I'm excited about the days ahead. So in the next, you know, three, four days, I'm going to be giving the birds the next, the very first vaccine. That should be Newcastle plus infectious bronchitis. I don't know if I'll be available, guys, when, when the vaccination is being done. Honestly, I really don't know if I'll be around. Because I have to work. I have to work. Um, I have, I'm a doctor and I need to work. So hopefully I'll be around. I want to record as many videos as possible for you guys so that you see what I'm doing. And I know you guys, a lot of you guys are learning, yeah? I get lots of people telling me, hey, I'm so glad, thankful for what you're teaching us and all that kind of stuff. And lots of you guys are teaching me stuff in the comment section and i love it i'm enjoying it so guys thanks for watching in case of any question anything just leave it in the comment section below uh lots of love bye bye